And we are in game number one, guys. Welcome, everyone, to the final series. A lower bracket for double cup three. Sito is going to be facing Winchester for one spot in the tournament's grand final. Where whoever wins over here is going to be moving on to face Chato, the almighty GL legend. Is going to be waiting with one point already in the grand finals over here for whoever wins in the lower brackets final series over here between both these players so taking a look at the civilizations and what we get for game number one we'll see the Citos playing with Hindustanis down the south Winchester playing with Hans up in the north is going to have a, of course a very strong civilization for this type of map Cito of course with Hindustanis and the cheaper village is going to have a very strong civilization for this type of map but we're going to take some time Take a look at the civilizations and the map generations as usual. And for the most part, that's going to give us enough time also to... Or that's going to allow us to hopefully make a transition already to the fuel age. And get some action going as these double triple TC start games tend to be a little bit slower at the very beginning. But once they pick up, of course, uh, they do go in turbo mode. So if I to get ads, hype enough stuff, then come back. The sound of Dark Age villages hammering house foundations. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's take a look at the civilization. Starting with Sito, playing with Hindustanis over here means he's going to have 10, 15, 20, 25 percent cheaper villagers in the Dark Field Castle and Imperial Ages. Besides that, we also get for Sito, for Hindustanis. 25% faster attacking camel type units. Plus one plus one on gunpowder units. Plus one plus one armor on gunpowder units. And then for the team bonus, we also see for the Hindustanis two bonus damage from scout line units and the camel units against buildings. Actually from light cavalry onwards and the camel, right? The units, right? And uh yeah, for Winchester and still playing with Hans, he's gonna get 10 and 20% cheaper cavalry archers in the castle in Imperial Ages. It's gonna begin with 200 population support at the expense of 100 wood, and besides that, we also see for the Hans 50% accuracy on Trocious as opposed to 15%. Nana, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub as well. It's very much appreciated. We're one month short of a full year already. And, and thank you so much. The Prime subs, you know how much I love them. They are free for you. They are so good for me. And hopefully this way we are going to make up eventually uh, the money that Amazon took from us. Speaking of which, by the way, guys, the audio interface that I originally meant to buy through Amazon and they ended up just keeping the money and not giving me the, the, the product, right? I had to repurchase uh, from a different store with some reserve money that I had and uh, yeah it's 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 very close from being delivered already it's already in the country I think it's going to be delivered in the next three days or so Mihai thanks so much for the raid welcome welcome the best is box yeah <laughs> exactly Nana thanks so much for the raid Mihai we are casting guys Double Cup 3's Lower Brackets Final Series, the best of 7. We were just taking a look at the Civilization bonuses. Now we're going to take a look at the map generation for both these players. In game number 1, we have Sito with Hindustanis down the south versus Winchester with Hans up in the north. Sito will be the first player to click up to the Fuel Age. It's going to be the player with the lowest amount of idle TC time as well. Makes sense, given the Civilization's bonuses. But taking a look at the map generation, we'll see that Sito's got on the left-hand side... The main goal towards the southeast. It's got the secondary goals, both of these on the left hand side. Meanwhile, for stone, we have the main stone on the right hand side, and the secondary stone is on the right hand side, even farther away, so it's not the best map generation for him. The right hand side instead is going to be a little bit better, I would say. The main goals over here kind of backish. When you draw a line between both his bases, you know, and what's forward over here from Vinchester as well. It seems like it's on the back. And then we have the secondary goals in the back as well. So it's actually really good. And then he's got even a third goal over here, a neutral one. 
on the back. So if we saw some walls come out for the bull player from here to here, here to here, and potentially from here to here, that's going to be pricey. Yeah, it's going to be time consuming, yes. But he would end up securing so many resources, even a wood line over here on the back. And extra stone. Little engagement coming up though. There we go. Beautiful. It's going in favor of Vinchester. Well played. Sito, sorry. Well played. Vinchester is the one to lose. The units. So, taking a look at Vinchester's map generation on the other hand. We already established Sito's map generation on the left hand side is not the best. Vinchester's left hand side generation is going to see the main goal spawn on the back, which is great. He could potentially go for something like from here to here and here to here. And he will be able to secure not only that gold. But also this stone, so both those resources on the back and even the wood line, so that's good. Oh, oh! A little bit of pressure though, coming in! Scout's too weak to fight the villagers off. Sito ends up losing one over here, he's gonna be left on only one scout. Oh, Vinchester, he's got double stable production, he's going for full scout! And Sito, you know what? He has made a play for a fast castle! While Vinchester is just going for scouts over here. If you take a look at the bull player, he's completely exposed still. Has not gotten the walls up anywhere. So this could be really good for Vinchester. If he finds a few villages exposed over here, that's going to put Sito in a very rough position. Let's take a final look at the map generation for Vinchester. This time around the right-hand side, we'll see that the, bull, that the red player so he has got the main goal towards the north. He's got the secondary goal on the left-hand side. The other secondary goal is actually... Um, towards the right hand side over here underneath the score for both these players but he's already been going for walls so he should be able to secure this wood line and yeah this wood line if he goes for a wall from here to here as well so that'll be good here comes Vinchester though and there we go he's governing right away the quick walls do not really work out for Sito. We're gonna see one village going down for sure. We're gonna see potentially more than one village. That's a lot of scouts over here. And actually, he does not manage to get the villages down close to the TC, but he does manage to get one villager and two villagers over here from the woodland anyway. And two villages are remaining very, very weak from Sito. Then she'll still be up for grabs if Winchester plays his cards right. He could try and uh, make a play for the Harrow's Knives over here. So what do we have for the wool player? He gets to the castle age, and the only thing we see is a second TC. So he doesn't really have anything to show for it, besides some extra economy in later stages of the game, but not going for any military over here. Certainly seems a little bit of a, like, a mistake, right? Winchester still has a lot of scouts around, and you know, Zito is not really going to defend his entire economy, just the third TC. Plus, with the villagers that Vinchester was able to take down from Sito. This man should stay at a respectable villager count, but... Yeah, having this much idle TC time certainly does not help for Vinchester. It's going out to the castle age, and assuming that Sito is only able to produce from two TCs at a time... Vinchester is probably going to start falling behind. Actually, sorry, he's going to... Fall to the same work account as Sito, or Sito rather is going to catch up to Vinchester's village account, right? But that is assuming no extra losses, and we might get some extra losses over here. Two spearmen remain over there, Franz Ito. However, Vinchester is doing a really good job with his unit control, taking the spearmen down, and now the villagers are completely exposed, Franz Ito. And we see one, two, three villagers going down. Make that four villagers going down. Yes, sir. That's even going to be another one with the fifth villager dead already from the bull player. Now, Vinchester finds himself in a much better position. He's got still the scouts over here left to work with, and he will take the Spearman down. While well, having two scouts left, he can't really do too much with these. So he'll get cleaned up for the most part, but he's already managed to do so much damage that I think it was worth it already. He just ended up losing 10 scouts over there, which are gonna amount to 800 resources. But still ended up losing 13 units, 7 of which were villagers. Sure, it's going to be only seven. Uh, actually, sorry, 350 resources compared to uh, 800 resources he lost in terms of the the cost of the units lost, right? However, Vinchester is going to prevent Sito from getting ahead in economy by preventing his villager lead from growing. So it's not too bad, and I would say in the end, it's definitely. Uh, worth it for Winchester. 
And he's got some knights coming out. Interestingly enough, though, we saw the red player go for triple archer ranges already on the right-hand side. He was going for knights first, and only then he's going to make the transition to cavalry archers. So we're going to get knights, we're going to get CA for Vincenzer, right? As he tells, he tells, he tells, he's going to get idle, man. Struggles to keep his economy going. Here we go. Beautiful. There we go. Cavalry archers are making it into the wood line, and we see a monk come out over there. The monk's going to be enough to keep the units at bay for the time being. There we go. Looking good. Castle drops coming in from Vinchester very soon, so long as he's able to defend those villagers. Should be left in a in a pretty good spot. Down south, we have the knight as well from Vinchester. Cannot really do too much over here, though. Just one knight. But this castle, this castle is going to make a big difference. The interesting thing, though, he's putting pressure on the left-hand side. We already established this was not the best map generation for Sito. Between both these bases, this was the one with the most exposed resources. But they are on the left-hand side. This main goal is too far away from the TC, and then the rest of the resources are going to be on the left-hand side for the most part, so I'm kind of curious. Yeah, Vincenzo didn't know about it, man. That could have been really good. If we realize about this, about both those goals over there, he probably would have tried to go for the castle over there instead, because he already has the units to prevent uh, Sito from collecting resources from here, right? If he was able to get the fortification on the left-hand side, that would make it impossible for Sito to make use of his left-hand side base for economy, other than just for... Gold and wood collection, of course. There we are. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Right hand side. He has some cover yards from Vinchester as well. Sito has not really lost too many extra villages compared to before. However, because Vinchester was able to keep up with villager production himself, he's even going for the 4 TC, right? Uh, although Sito's got 5. Because Vinchester's been able to keep up for the most part, he is. Oh, the shots! Oh, great shot from Sito. Yeah, Vinchester is able to. Stay within arm's reach of Sito's village account over here. Only 13 villagers behind. Not too shabby whatsoever. Nice conversion over there for Sito. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough though. Vinchester is going for a forward castle now on the right hand side. Probably would like to see that one on the hill. I'm actually not really sure. I think it, I think it's got the castle on the hill. Yeah, I think that the castle is just touching the hill. And man, Winchester seems to be dominating. It's tall. It's not gonna be able to remove that castle on the left hand side anytime soon. And on the right hand side, it seems like Winchester is going to get away with this castle as well. There we are. Yeah, and the cast comes up. Still can't do anything about it, and Winchester 
Even manages to rake in enough resources to click up to the Imperial Age while Sito. Not even close. In the Nala Castle! Vinchester's gameplay in this game, though, is on a whole different level. He only got about 46 minutes of extra gather economy time. That's going to amount to about 900 extra resources yet. He was able to get three castles up, go up to the Imperial Age. Faster. Get a bunch of extra military units out over here. And how does he do it? I'm gonna take a look at the amount of gathering, or actually, uh, the uh, amount of resources collected total. Both these players at the end of the game, but Winchester just seems to make stuff happen out of absolutely nowhere. Yeah, we have Tarkins on the way now for Vinchester as well. And to be honest, he doesn't really need it, but it's good. It's better for raiding. The higher Pierce armor is not going to be quite as acceptable against TC's castles even, right? But yeah, it's going to be facing for the most part Gulan, which go down to Knights already as they are. And I, I honestly... Do not really know how Sito might be able to hold on over here. Like, well, technically, the Hindu Center, they do have counters to whatever Ventures has got. Gulen will counter the Cavalry Archers. Camels will counter Knights and even Tarkins, of course. However, Ventures' position over here is looking so much stronger. By getting to the Imperial Age earlier, he's got Head Start Trebuchet production, so he's got Trebuchet already coming out from the castle on the left hand side, which will allow him to take this castle down. Could potentially go for Trebuchets from the castles on the right hand side and take the castle uh, down from Sito over there as well. And now the player, the player is trying to make a play for that defensive castle. That's a lot of units he's gonna have to fight against though, and it seems like these villagers are probably going to go down in the end. That castle is going to get denied most likely, as we see Vincenzo bring the cover the archers alongside the Tarkins. Pressure over here from the red players too high. And Sito, Sito's losing a lot of villagers! A lot of villagers! The trebuchet already deploys from Vinchester as he goes for yet another castle on the left hand side. Leaving him on two versus one castle. So long, of course. And Sito doesn't manage to get this castle up himself. That's going to be the case. There we are. This is taking so much damage. Meanwhile, on the right hand side. On the right hand side, we have no trebuchets, but just the cavalry archer, Tarkin, and Knight push over here from Vinchester is already going to leave a few losses for the bull player. One, two, three, four villages going down already. There we are. And so far, so good. There we go, Trebuchet goes down right away from Sito, so Vinchester keeps the castle up. It's got its own Trebuchet moving forward. Targeting this castle next, and on the left hand side. He's under a lot of pressure though. Three Trebuchets over here from Sito, so one of the castles from Vinchester crumbles. But here come the Tarkans, they are taking the Trebuchets down right away. Doesn't need too many units over here, just needs to focus. The Trebuchet is down and... He cannot take the second one though. Well played. Sito manages to keep that one alive, but still. Definitely on the back foot over here, the bull player. Has fallen behind right now in military. Has fallen behind already in economy. Has 
falling behind. Almost every single regard. Well, he's got Imperial Camel on the way, which is certainly going to help against any cavalry units from Winchester. The military count over here from Winchester is still so much higher that I'm not convinced it's going to be enough, especially with the cavalry archers. They will still shred the camels down. Even Imperial Camels, man. And the Cherish is going down over here as well. Once again, well done. Well done, Winchester. That's one castle up from the left hand side, one castle up towards the south over here. Two additional castles on the back so you can go for Tarkins as much as he pleases, but he doesn't even need to. He's locked the 200 population, Walsito. It's kind of stuck over here at 120 or so. It doesn't even have enough population space to keep on going for more. Manchester seems to be. Dominating game number one, and is this a glimpse of what the rest of the series is going to look like? Is this going to be a very one sided set for Winchester? Well, you know, you gotta remember that Vinch got knocked down over here to the lower brackets by Tato himself, while Sito, Sito got knocked out by Tato too. Uh, however, Winchester seemed to have given Taro a much, much harder run for his money. So it does seem to have struggled here a little bit more. Yeah, so he's going to call the GG, but what I'm trying to say is Winchester... Winchester seemed to have a much tougher run to the lower brackets final compared to Sito. I'm really sure that's going to matter too much over here, of course. Given that, in the end, you do have to beat everyone you come across to get to the final anyway. And Sito is, of course, going to be a very strong player himself. And I guess we are going to find out if it's going to be strong enough, though. Let's take a look at the achievements as game number one is already over. We're going to be taking a look at game number two in a moment. However, for military, we see that game number one favors Winchester by quite a lot. Uh, very close to 3 to 2k ratio for Vinch, we're gonna see for economy, also a stronger economy for Vinchester, and not even close, about 7,000, close to 200 extra resources for Vinch, so while for society, we'll see the Vinch got a lot of extra villagers at the end of the game, it's going to coincide, it's going to coincide, sorry, with his maximum villager count throughout the game. And he ended up losing about 11 villagers this game, while Sito, on the other hand, not even close, comparing his villager max count to his current villager count at the end of the game, it's going to be 36 lower. And for total amount of villagers lost, Sito ended up losing 86 villagers throughout the game. That's a massive amount of villager losses. And there we go, guys. Welcome, everyone, then, to game number two in the series. So far, 1-0. Favorite in Winchester. Sito. It's going to be playing with Lithuanians this time around. Winchester is going to play with Bengalis. Well, we know that Sito could not make uh, use of Hindustanis anymore, but Winchester... Should have had the Hindustanis open, he decides to go for Bengalis instead. We already saw Winchester make use of the civilization on this map in the past. Uh, I believe it was against Hindustanis. If it was not against Hindustanis, it might have been against Japanese, I think. I think I think I think it was against the Viper, right? The where that the, the, he went for Bengalis, or was it against Tato? I think it might have been against Tato actually. I have a memory of Winchester pushing Tato with Bengalis pretty successfully. But I might be miserable. And it was one of the GL players. <laughs> For sure. Four quarters, that's basically a dollar. Yeah. Indeed. 100 pennies. Let's take a look at the civilization bonuses, starting with Sito's first. We're going to see a Lithuania's gate, 150 extra food upon starting the game. On top of that, they have 10% faster moving skirmish spearling units. 
They have uh, one extra attack on knights in light chapter. Each relic garrison up to four relics. And for the team bonus, 20% faster working monasteries. What else do we have for Mr. Sito? Well, 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 I'll tell you. We'll see. For Mr. Sito, a very strong civilization for a map like this, as getting the extra food at the beginning of the game is going to allow him to keep the TCs working a little bit better, a little bit easier compared to Winchester, right? If you take a look, Winchester's already gotten a lot of extra TC time. While Winchester civilization, on the other hand, the Bengalis are going to give him plus three, plus yes. three armor on. Oh, what happened over here? Any restarts? I didn't use any, not sure. Let's ask. Uh, Sito says, let's check. And uh, he says, can't find. It's okay, let's go. Okay, so uh, Sito wanted to, to get a re over there. Is it probably because of the TC generation? Perhaps. What is it about? I'm not really sure. Hmm. Hey. He hasn't lost anything yet. So, I don't know. Well, anyway. Bitches of Civilization, besides having the extra armor on monks, is going to have also HP regeneration on ships. That is not relevant on this one, of course. Their elephants, they take 25% less bonus damage and they have conversion resistance. However, uh, in addition to that, Bengalis get two additional villagers out from each TC each time that they go up to the next stage. And... Uh, There we go. In addition to that, we'll see the Lithuanians, uh, sorry, the Bengalis also get for the team bonus. I what was the team bonus? I think the um, the trade cards they bring food in addition to gold, right? Let me actually just take a quick look over here. Bengalis is a civilization you don't get to see very often, and yeah, yeah, that is a that is the one. All right. So I'm not 100% sure about stuff. But anyway, that is a very nice trap from Mr. Sito. Check this out. Chops the villager over here just in time. He was paying attention. Actually, he's going to end up trapping all the villagers from Winchester, which is very interesting. Winchester should have seen this, though. Oh, no way! What? He's getting... He's getting another wall! He's getting another wall! And he's trapping two villagers over here! What's going on with Winchester? What's he paying attention to? He's going for the Great Wall of China towards the south. And he was not paying attention. Oh my lord, that is so many idle villagers. Amazing. One, two, three, four trapped villagers already. Incredible. Incredible. That is just the way it is. And I imagine Sito would probably not be interested in getting a restart uh, this time around anymore, right? After the fantastic wall out he was able to get over here. So we talked about the civilizations. We didn't really talk about the map too much, but if you've been keeping track of Double Cup 3, uh, if you've been watching my stream whatsoever in the last month or so, you're probably already aware of what this map is all about. And if you're not, well, South's going to have uh, food from water. Uh, the north is going to have land-based food, so berries, deer, even uh, ibex, I think. No, no ibex. Well, deer is the same, right? And then some herdables uh, with the sheep and some lurables with the boar as well. And then the left-hand side is going to have the, the stone, and the right-hand side is going to have the gold. Every quarter is going to have... Uh, base amount of starting gold per player so you can see over here despite this being the stone quarter we still have some gold over here so if you get full control on the right hand side that doesn't really guarantee that you're going to be the only player with access to gold because we have gold in all quarters however if you get the left hand side that's going to guarantee you're the only player with access to stone if you get the south quarter that's not really going to guarantee you anything because you still have access to food up in the north and that's going to be the same for the north, right? So it's it's a very interesting concept. Uh, and for the most part, the, the left-hand side is going to be the most important quarter, in my opinion. And that's usually why we see players go so heavily into four castles and full aggression. 
Once they get to the castle each on the left hand side specifically of course that's going to allow them to secure the stone for themselves. Here comes Sito. It's gonna be the first player to the castle each. He's got a barracks on the way. Meanwhile, Winchester. Winchester's got Spearman. Won't be enough for him to defend. And there we are. The castle's coming up and take a look at the castle location though from Mr. Sito. That's a get out of my quarter. Castle doesn't have enough to go for second castle himself though well if you take a look at Benchester because he was going so heavily he's going up to the castle H a little bit later yes he'll be able to go for two castles at a time and where is he going to place castles on the red player you would ideally want to go for a castle probably around here around the right hand side and then another one on the left hand side probably around here so that you're able to deny all the stone but he's going for one a little bit farther away it's fine, it, so long as he's able to deny this and this, he's gonna be okay. And uh, let's take a look. Well done. Fantastic. Castle comes up. Vinchester is going for another four castle on the right hand side. He's going for a four castle up in the north as well. He ended up buying the stone that he needed for the third castle, of course, he only had enough for two. But this puts him in a very good position, two castles versus only, uh, three castles versus only two for Vinchester and Sito, respectively. Thank you so much for the follows, guys, everybody, coming into the stream for the first time today. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. Big shout out to Weo Coyotl and Elia, of course, for making this open casting, for hosting this tournament. It wouldn't be possible for us to... Uh, because of these fantastic games if it weren't because of them so big shout out to them if you would like to contribute towards the prize pool for this tournament you can do exclamation mark dc3 as well and you're going to get some information over there we have already had some generous supporters for the tournament which does put the tournament prize pool higher to what it was for double cup 2 which is already great of course but if you would like to chip in and, and make it even greater uh, you can do so by doing exclamation mark DC3 third cast comes out for Zito is gonna be the first player to get to the Imperial Age in Winchester Winchester is struggling big time over here and Zito seems to have been able to take advantage of his civilization so much better compared to Vinch we'll see the red player putting pressure on the right hand side with yet another castle and potentially pushing Zito out of the right hand side because we still have access to gold on all other quarters too, is not going to be quite as good for Winchester. While if Sito, he's getting the second castle over here, right? If he does end up going for a, if he does end up controlling the left hand side, that is, Sito's going to put himself in a much better position because he's going to be the only player with access to stone at all. That is not even it as well, but I completely forgot about this. The left hand side quarter is the only one with a neutral market, which can allow you to trade as well. It's not going to be the best, of course, but if it does come down to you run out, uh, run out of gold up in the north, down the south, and in the west, of course, the market's going to come in quite handy. I check coming out, already getting some villages down. There we go. Beautiful. Fantastic. There we go, the castle's going down for sure. 
So Winchester is very likely to get pushed away from the left hand side. Meanwhile on the right. Let's gather the castles up still. He's coming in with the... Rathas. Gonna try and take the churches down. We'll see still brought the villages over. Try to create a human wall. Couldn't quite do it. So these trebuchets are... Actually, they're staying up. Very good unit control over there for Sito overall. There we are. Yeah, the Wrath has get completely cleaned up. And you know what, Sito? It's looking pretty good. He was able to get one of the castles down from Vinchester. Now he's getting another castle up over here himself. And the Trishes are coming over. As Vinchester is basically out of the left hand side quarter already. Beautiful. Castle scrambling and Vinchester. Well, he completely out of the left hand side. He does still have a higher villager count compared to Zito. Still, of course, has presence elsewhere, like up in the north. He's still looking right over here, down the south. This actually seems to be the one putting pressure over here. Trish here already on the way. And then on the right hand side, he ended up losing his own castle. The fourth castle, but he is going for his own castle over here. And as he gets to the Imperial Age, and he got to the Imperial Age, he'll be, of course, getting access to Trebuchets himself as well. And Vinchester is not dead. He's just severely wounded by Sita's incredible gameplay and fantastic unit control so far. This is not too bad, you know? Definitely, Vinchester is not out of it. Wrath is coming out for him, though. No Trebuchets, alright. I don't see any siege workshops over here, so it doesn't seem like he's gonna try and siege the castles down, which means that Sito's probably gonna be the one to get right hand side control as well. Now, th that puts Vinchester in a very precarious position. Up in the north, Sito is. Yeah, looking still all right over here. He's got a trebuchet coming up, and Vinchester doesn't have a castle. Sito's the only player with a castle over here, you know, if. He's able to take the TC down over here. He might actually be able to make a play for Rathas alone and and take the north from Vinchester and down the south. Seems like it's the only quarter that Vinchester is looking stronger in. He's about to run out of gold over here as well. Although if he does not get in full control, he's going to have access to this gold as well, which is not too bad. But compared to all the gold that Sito is going to get access to by securing 3 out of 4 quarters, of course, it's just peanuts for, for Vinchester. One thing you gotta keep in mind is that while each quarter is going to be divided by a wood line, by a fairly thick wood line, you can still utilize the trebuchets to cut through the trees and just come in. So I guess we'll see. Because it went down for Vinchester on the right hand side and Sito is looking great. But north, we have archer ranges coming up, and wow! Vinchester does not make the GG wait over here. It's going to call it right there in Sito. Still, it's going to be the one to take game number two. It's going to be 1 1. For Vinchester and Sito, respectively, let's go and take a look at the achievements before jumping into game number three. But this is already getting, um, you know, the plot thickens. Now we are going to have a five game series at the very least, so very much looking forward to it. For me, Tari, a better KD for Sito. For sure, not even close. For economy, we have a stronger economy for Sito as well. And uh, we take a look at society. We're going to see a stronger society for Vinchester, who was the player with the most villagers for the majority of the game. But still, his economy was not anywhere near as efficient as Sito, especially towards the end. Every time that he got pushed away from resources, it was it made his economy so inefficient. So, we'll play it. Vinchester 1, Sito 1. Going to have 5 game series guaranteed over here. Let's go into game number 3 in a moment and see what we get. And there we are. 
What do we get then for this one? Well, first off, we're gonna have uh, for Mr. Sito, the Italians. Winchester is playing with Byzantines himself. With the Civilization, Sito will have a very strong one for water type maps, even for a hybrid type maps. Taking a look at the bonuses, we'll see that they get 15% cheaper fishing ships. They get a 15% discount to go up to the next stage. A discount on university and dock upgrades as well as 20% cheaper gunpowder units. For the team bonus, we'll see that the Italians also get access to Condottieri from the barracks in the Imperial We talked about this in the previous series. Which is a civilization instead, the Byzantines are a force to be reckoned with. We'll see for the red player, first off. 10, 20, 30, and 40% extra HP on buildings in the, you know, uh, dark field castle in Imperial Ages. Besides that, we also have for Sito, for Winchester, sorry. 25% discount on Skirm Spear and Camel Rider units. In addition to that, Byzantines will also get 25% faster attacking Fireline units, Fireline ships, that's going to be Fire Galleys, Fire Ships, and Fast Fire Ships. And then on top of that, we'll also see four. There we are. On top of that, we're also going to see for the Byzantines. Free Town Watch, Free Town Patrol. For the team bonus, Monk's Heal units 100% faster compared to other civilizations, so... Yeah, it's not too bad, you know? So far, so good. There's not really too much to take a look at over here. Um, we can we can take a look at the map generation. But yeah, the game's going to be pretty uneventful. Especially longer at the very beginning with these settings. Because of having to go for extra docks, which is going to delay your fuel age. And while the games usually do accelerate quite substantially once you do get past... There we are. Once you do get past the... Uh, Fuel age for the most part, as you're able to fast castle more often than not. It's pretty 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 slow at the very beginning. So taking a look at the map generation, we're gonna see that Sito's got well on the left hand side island, he's got one gold forward. Over here we're gonna have a stone towards the southwest. We have a gold towards the south, we have a stone over here towards the south as well, which is great. Taking a look at the map generation on the right hand side, we'll see that's it all. Well, the blue players got the main goal on the right hand side. So, this one is backish and it's so much better compared to the resources he had forward or he had on the left hand side. And we have another goal up in the north towards the left hand side that is not the best. But this one is going to be so much better compared to what he had available on the left hand side island. Stones forward over here on the right hand side as well. And then taking a look at the map generation for the red player instead. We're going to see that he's got the main goal on the right hand side. Then he's got the main stone towards the south over here. Yeah, and that's about it, right? There is a goal over here too from Vinchester. So two forward goals. There is... Another stone over here for Vinchester. Too far. All the resources super, super far for the red player. And it's not looking the greatest. While if we take a look at down, at, you know, at the bottom side of the map over here, we're going to see that the red player, he's got the main goal on the left hand side. That is an <laughs> atrocious arrow. <laughs> he's got the goal on the left hand side. And then he's got everything else forward. So the map generation over here seems to be so much better for Sito, if only on the right-hand side, which is looking so much stronger compared to uh, either of uh, Winchester's map generations. And you know what? This might make a big difference, especially with how aggressive the players tend to be once they get to the Castle H online over here. 
it's not unusual to see the players go for castle drops, so this is gonna make a big difference. I guess the one thing that uh, it's also worth noting for Zito is that while he does have one resource on the back with the main goal over here, technically on the back of his base, it is kind of close to the water, right? So if he does not get good water presence, he might end up getting pushed away from here by navy units. Hey, Burkita! Hi, hi! That's good walls from Tito. Beautiful. Oh ho ho! <laughs> he even quick walled the scout in! How good is that from Sito? We already saw him go for these shenanigans in game number two, trapping villagers from the interceptor now. He's been going to trap the scout over there. Let me actually go back a little bit over here because I, I want to I want to take a look at this. Check this out. How good is this? Here comes Vinchester, targeting the villager from Sito, who manages to get, to get the quick walls around the villager. Now Sito brings an additional villager from the right hand side to get the walls up around the scout. Doesn't seem like Vinchester pays attention, so there we go. Vinchester tried to snipe the villager from Sito, Sito ends up trapping the scout and walking away uncontested. Well played. Oh, and the right hand side, you know, that was so close to almost traps the other scouts from Winchester, but Winchester realized about this one this time around. He was able to keep his own scout alive. Or free, rather. Castle is in the way for Sito. Yeah. We're expecting somebody to try and go for a fast castle. In the end, it's going to be Vinchester, the one to try and put aggression in the fuel age with fire galleys. He's going to be the, uh, the first one targeting the fishing ships. And he might get a few over here, but once Sito gets to the castle age, notice that he's been uh, collecting already stone, right? And because of the map generation that we saw from Vinchester, where he's got basically all his resources forward everywhere except for this goal which is side-ish but it's not even in the back it's to the side still is looking very good and he's got a scout for on the left hand side let me take a look what is the scouting information looking like for mr sito over here and nice night by the way Tito ends up taking the the, the the scout from Vinchester down left hand side but yeah, we take a look at the scouting information and Sito is not really aware of where the resources are from Winchester on the left hand side. Meanwhile, on the right hand side, he knows about the resources being forward. So he could try to go for the castle over here, especially as he's got a beautiful, beautiful hill to work out of. Sito could get a castle up over there, end up denying these resources. And even if it, this one is going to be beyond the range of the castle, it's still going to allow him to... Still going to make it difficult for Winchester to go and collect this. In any case. Hey Teo! Hi hi, welcome. Nice push, Sito was trying to go for the forward on the left hand side and said, Never mind! He's going for it on the right hand side! There we go! The castle's coming up, guys! Is it those looking great? Mish! Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate it. I hope you had a great stream, guys. Welcome, everyone. I hope you enjoyed Mish's stream. We're casting right now the final of the lower brackets of Double Cup 3. 
In case any of you might have missed, this took place earlier today. It was too early for a lot of my audience and for myself included as well. Plus, I didn't know that it was going to take place today, so... Uh, we are coming to record the games and hopefully this comes at a time that's going to be more comfortable for a lot of people to watch. So far, it's one-to-one. -one. Game number three still is looking pretty strong. Getting the castle up on the right-hand side. Did not take advantage of the hill over here, but got the castle up. Uh, close enough to the TC to range it. And then on the left-hand side, he's got a siege workshop for it. It's got a monastery as well. That's going to be about it, by the looks of it. Of course, we'll see siege come out. First off, he's going for scorpions. But all of this aggression, by the way, from Stoke, comes at the cost of water presence. If you take a look, Winchester's got four fire galleys right now. sito has got four fire ships. But Winchester, by being the first player to put pressure on water early on in the fuel age, ends up keeping his own fishing ships alive and working. Thus, he stays ahead and work count compared to Sito by quite a bit. Well, Sito, on the other hand, does not have a single fishing ship to work with. Another cast is coming up for Sito. That's a beautiful one. He'll end up targeting both Winchester's TCs. Well, game number one seemed to be fairly one-sided. Now, games two and three are certainly proving that Sito is not here to just coast through the games. He's not here to just go on autopilot. He's here to give it his all. And he's looking so strong already in this position. Sito could definitely take this game and put Winchester on the back foot, right? Well, the red player, on the other hand, he uses the market in order to get his own castle up. And I'm not really sure where he's going to try and get it up. Because right now, it's too late for him to try and, and deny any of the castles from Sito, right? Instead, he goes for a defensive castle over here on the back. Now, that is not good. And unfortunately, Winchester's resources are completely exposed. And we already took a look at this earlier in the game. But basically, red player only has this gold to collect from over here on the left-hand side. And that's about it. If you take a look at the right-hand side island, there are no golds available for Zito whatsoever. For Winchester, rather, and he's bringing the villagers over the right-hand side, though. Around the castle, we have uh, the exodus from Winchester. He's going to try and secure his own resources by going for a TC basically within Zito's own TC's range, I think. Actually, it's one tile too far. Oh no, it's actually within range. You know what? Yeah, Sito could potentially have uh, targeted the foundation over here, but it does not matter. Purely just going to be on the way for Sito. It's going to be the first player with access to trebuchets. It's going to be the first player with access to chemistry. It's going to be the first player with access to bombard cannons. Well, Winchester, on the other hand, might be able to go out to the Imperial Age himself as well. Very soon, but... It's been very difficult for him to keep up this game. And the water lead that he had has kind of vanished for the most part. He's still ahead in Navy count compared to Sito. Just by one, right? Just by two right now. Four versus two fire ships. Definitely not a strong enough lead to prevent anyone from uh, getting water control potentially. And this year's live record, we are casting record the games for this one. And most likely for most of the series that we're going to be covering throughout the week. Because T90 Titans League has taken place, or the round of 36 has taken place for the most part already, and they are going to share the round of 18 series starting on Friday. We have tomorrow, uh, as well as Wednesday and Thursday, to cast as many series as we can from from that right and then we are just going to make a transition over to to the deciders there we go that's one to see going down very soon from Winchester and he's already lost one up in the north well, he had close to enough resources to go up to the Imperial Age before. That is no longer the case. And Sito is looking absolutely fantastic. Well, the blue player doesn't really have any water presence. Uh, only now he's gotten the fire ship out. He should still be in a pretty good spot, right? 
Yeah, by being the first player to get to the Imperial Age, he's gonna be the first player with access to fast fire ship, for instance. He's got Trojus already on the ways. He's gonna try and trip this castle down. He's got two Trojus coming out from the right hand side. Yes, sir. Wait. Oh no, it's one on the right, one on the left. Because of the defensive castle over here from Winchester as well. Well, the red players certainly going to struggle big time to keep out this game. And while Zito might be looking a little bit worse in terms of economy and in terms of military count, he is positionally speaking in a much better spot. He counts the Cataphract, Vinchester shouldn't really be able to do too much damage over here so long as Zito pays some attention. A Genoese crossbows from Zito Civilization should be able to take care of Cataphracts no problem. Another castle on the way now for Zito as well. Blocking arrows coming in. And Vinchester. Vinchester is gonna go all out. He's got a lot of villagers moving over here to try and keep the castle up. He's gonna bring a ram on the left hand side. Meanwhile on the right hand side. He was bringing the ram and he does. Get the ram to approach the trebuchet. This trev is going down. Is it going down? It's not going down. It's staying up. But it's not staying up in the end. The Cataphrax now. They do end up taking the trebuchet down over there to go down, but a little bit too late. As the trebuchet already was taken down, as it does gonna have to go for yet another one. He does have, he did have another one already. Kill that. Meanwhile, on the left hand side, he is forced into these walls to defend the trebuchets, and he already ends up taking one loss. Anyway, thanks so much, Otis. Very much appreciated. I didn't really do much for that, but. You know, that that's what. How they say it, we won the World Cup. I was not in the match. I was not part of the team, but I'll take credit for it anyway. <laughs> I like to believe that I helped the national team to take the World Cup by nervously watching the matches. Oh, beautiful walls from Sito as well. Building a little fortification around the trebuchet is not going to be enough though. Yeah, yeah, so long as Sito pays attention over here, should be able to get the trebuchet up. The hill is certainly going to help. If it weren't because of the hill, he would most likely have lost the trebuchet already. To be fair, the same can be said for Winchester as well. If it weren't because of the hill over here, it probably would have been the Davos in the castle already too. Still have one Cherishi left for Sito on the right hand side. The castle is staying up for Winchester for the most part. And wow, Winchester is actually going over the left hand side for dropping a castle around Sito's base close to the TC. Yeah, and Sito's idle TC time over here has been out of this world because of his food production being extremely lackluster. It, it, it seems to me as if Sito, once he got the castles up next to Winchester's both TCs, he got a little bit too overconfident over there. I, I feel like he thought the game was already over and he decided to push and just try to uh, prioritize military production instead, but Winchester was able to take advantage of that. He's got a much stronger economy to work with right now. He's gonna be on his own way to the Imperial Age very soon as well and... You know, being able to castle drop Sito from this position is nothing short of incredible from Winchester. And check this out! He's dropping the Trevi Jades with a beautiful quick wall. Let's actually go back over here, 30 seconds or so. Check this out. Trevi Jades were coming forward from Sito for some reason. That's gotta be a misclick and... Then Winchester. Well, the moment he realizes about this, gets the walls up and this is beautiful. Sito doesn't realize about it whatsoever, so now Winchester is going to end up punching the Trevichus over here to death. Fantastic. And yeah, Trevichus deploy. They're gonna try to take something down, but it's unlikely they'll be able to do too much when Trevichus goes down. Yeah, and the other one goes down as well. Almost right away. Yeah, yeah, just punch the trebuchet down the ground. Well done. Salve. 
Certainly a lot of resources. Ito cannot really afford to lose. At this point. Gas from Winchester staying up on the right hand side. Cast from Winchester staying up on the left hand side as well. And Imperial H is finally on the way. I didn't even know that the mod existed. Yes, it's the villager boxing. The village, um, yeah, the boxing gloves mod. It was part of an event some time ago. I don't remember which one, the villager vacation or, or something like that. I think. Anniversary event? Hmm, maybe it, yeah. Vincesters keeping the castle up for the time being still. Still a stronger economy compared to Sitoin. What a messy game. What a messy game. Interestingly enough, Vincesters is the only player going for Navy right now. So for the most part has not really been prioritizing that too much. But I guess technically he could try to make a play for water if he wanted to. He just has got some villages exposed up in the north. And then the rest is going to be at the center, right? It seems to me like... Zita should be able to get the uh, right hand side island in any case while well, Winchester was able to keep the castle up over here for very long It did come at a very big cost of course Every minute or so that he's had The castle up and he's been repairing the castles just represented so many resources going down Just trying to keep the just trying to repair the castle Beautiful push though from Vinge, taking the TC down, well done. The thing though is, it seems like Sito might end up getting the right hand side. Yeah, and Sito's food situation has been atrocious for the most part of the game. He's got almost half an hour of uh, idle TC time. But yeah, the thing over here is, Sito seems like he's going to get the right hand side, or at the very least, he seems to be in a good position to do so. I want to take the castle down over there. There's not going to be anything left for Winchester to defend himself. Could potentially go for another castle. While on the left hand side, Winchester. Winchester is trying to take Sito out of here, but then. Does he have full control of the map? Not yet. If he takes Sito down on the left hand side, the right hand side is still going to have a lot of fortifications from Sito. Meanwhile, it's going to be the bull player! To come over with Genoese crossbows. Take the villagers down from Vinchester. Now the cataphracts are even going down. Some to the conversions, some to the Genoese crossbows. And this is putting Sito in an alright spot on the left hand side. Well, it, it seemed like he was dying for sure. Right hand side. Still the castle staying up from Vinchester. And this is just incredible. He's got so many stone miners. It's gonna be Sito the one to lose the castle over there. It's gonna be left only on one castle. And you know what? Winchester ends up kind of securing this side of the map, or the north. And he's got kind of the west, for the most part, as well. While Sito is going to be towards the south and towards the east, for the most part. And now the game is kind of back to being neck and neck. Very similar population, only about 13 extra workers for Winchester.
There you go. And so we're going down now, Sito. Finally getting some extra food workers. <laughs> so late into this game and... What an amazing match so far, to be honest. Here we go. Trisha goes down now from the interference though. Might be able to start putting pressure once again. He's got another Trisha on the way. Cataphracts and Trebuchets from Vinchester on the right hand side are getting a lot of damage done though. So Vinchester was able to turn the game around. It seemed before as if he was losing the right hand side island for sure and still struggled to seal the deal. Vinchester has done a really good job staying alive here. And it seemed as if Vinchester was going to end up getting control of the left hand side instead. And Sito, well, Sito was able to survive over here really well as well. However, now it seems like it's going to be Vinchester who wants to get control of the right hand side island, and it's going to be Vinchester to survive on the left hand side alongside Sito. So it's going to be one and a half islands over here favoring Vinchester versus half an island for Sito. Good defense for Zito so far, still in the levels in the TC and does not have any fortifications left on the right hand side, so if it just goes for a few cataphracts over here, it's gonna be very hard for Zito to defend himself. Of course, he's got the monks, but if we get a few extra units from Vinchester, he should be able to offset for this as well. And Zito's food situation, though, is laughable at this point. He's not on food anymore compared to just a minute ago. It feels bad. Nice knives from Benchester. Something similar to that is what we need on the right hand side if Winchester is to take this game. He's got three cataphracts. How many monks do we have for Sito? He's got two total. I think these two might be on the right hand side. Nope. He's got just the one guy. So here comes the conversion. Might be able to get one. Still have two cataphracts left. And the quick walls though. Just in time. From the blue player. Managed to delay the monk going down, but in the end it does go down, and now it's going to be Winchester's game to lose 100% of the time. This is getting the castle up and taking the defenses from Sito once again. The blue player is gonna be left on no TCs basically. Does he know about it? He knows about it, yeah. Just can't arrange it yet. He's going to fix that. And then on the left hand side, Winchester is knocking Sito out of this island too. Man, you gotta feel it for Sito. It certainly seemed as if he had this game in the bag already. Much, much earlier into the game, but Winchester was able to slowly, but surely, systematically bring this game back. It's just going to have to call the GG because Winchester is not losing this one. It's going to be 2-1 favoring the Russian player now for game number 4. We'll see what we get. Still.
needs to get more wins over here. To have a greater chance. Well, Winchester, if he gets one more game, he's already going to put himself one point away from taking the full series. So, yeah, uh, Winchester seems to be really, really good at prioritizing, as you're saying, correct. For me, Tari Dane, we see that Winchester and Sito, they both end up losing a substantial amount of units. In the end, the KD is going to favor Winchester, though. With better KD than 7 to 6. Well, for economy, it's going to favor Winchester as well. And it's not even close. 14,000 extra resources are close to it. 13,400 extra resources. Stronger economy, uh, society actually over here for Winchester. Not only getting the most villagers out at any given point in time in this game, but also losing the fewest villagers over here. Now, to be fair, that is not a small amount of units. He ended up losing 53 workers. And in the end, still ended up losing 65. So it's, I, I, I guess, a, a little bit worse for still. But yeah, it was not pretty for Winchester either. It's just he was able to get the hang of this game so much better compared to Mr. Sito. Are all somewhat comparable APMs over here? Not too high considering the players. This is not different that, than what you would get from a player such as Dowd, for instance, on a map like this, so it's good. And here we are, guys. Welcome, everyone, then to the next one. Curled Island is uh, Curl Islands is a map that has favored Winchester more often than not. And Sito, on the other hand, I'm actually not really sure what the track record for Sito on this map is. Taking a look at the uh, civilizations for the players, this time around it's going to be Sito the one to play with Byzantines. So we already talked about Byzantines in the previous one, right? Uh, in the previous game. So. The summer round, Winchester instead is going to be playing with Japanese. Japanese we haven't talked about in the series so far. So we'll see that Vinch gets 5, 10, 15, 20% extra gather economy or actually gather rate on fishing ships in Dark Fido Castle and Imperial Ages. So they work faster. Besides that, we're going to see also for the Japanese a 50% discount on drop off buildings. As well as 33% faster attacking infantry units starting in the field age. And then for the team bonus. So the Japanese get 50% extra line of sight on galley line units. Which can be quite handy. Especially when you're going forward. Trying to find some exposed villagers. Trying to find an open area to strike. But can also be quite handy if you're playing defensive. And you're just trying to prevent the sea towers from coming out. For instance, you're going to spot uh, villagers coming up since a little bit farther away. So this map, you guys probably remember this one. It's a very special one. And it's a map that actually allows you to build a building type that is not available otherwise elsewhere. What do we get? Well, they are able to build sea towers only on this map for 25 wood and 25 stone. It's a special tower type that only can be built on top of water terrain. And is going to have higher bonus damage against ships compared to standard watchtowers. And of course it comes in significantly cheaper. But you cannot garrison your villagers inside of them. So you can go for a trash if you want. But it's not going to be quite as effective of course. Nice! A little move over here. Vinchester is going to steal the water buffaloes up in the north from Sito. Meanwhile on the right hand side it seems like uh, Sito has not really gotten these yet and if we take a look at the down at the, at the south over here we're gonna see that Winchester most likely already ended up yeah he already got the water buffaloes then the left hand side he already got the water buffaloes over here if you like to tip rumble tumble I think the command for it is exclamation mark tip or you can scroll down and you're going to find all the information you need. Oh, actually, uh, all the links, the relevant links in the support panel underneath the stream. If you like to contribute towards 
Double Cap 3's prize pool instead. Uh, the link for that's going to be in the command. You can do exclamation mark DC3. That'll be about it. There we go. Here comes Winchester. He's over to the transport and villages already, and we were expecting to see this. Winchester has gone for the same th uh, for the same thing over and over again every time that he's utilized this map. And now Sito, he will realize about the transport ship coming over. There we are. Just gonna try to block it a little bit. This is going to delay the towers just barely, but not by too much. And honestly, if Winchester was paying attention whatsoever, I was going to suggest him go over to the right-hand side instead. Because obviously, Sito is going to be expecting the towers to come up around this area. Okay, alright! Alright, Winchester is actually sticking there. Interesting. And Sito is trying to find the units. He should be able to. He's going over the right-hand side. Oh no, he's going the wrong way! And this one, yeah, there we go. He should bring this one forward. Let's see if he can spot it. Winchester is already going for all the sea towers. He's going for the dock over here. And another difference between sea towers and watchtowers, of course, is also the fact that Sito, uh, or actually either player over here, can build the sea towers in the dark age. They do not need to wait for the fuel age to get there at all. There we are. The duck's coming up. Winchester is going to be the first player to get to the village. Beautiful. See, tower's coming up for Winchester defensively as well. It's not just going to be forward. Is it though? It's going for a defensive one over here on the right hand side. He doesn't have one on the way, so it doesn't seem like he's going to try and make a play for towers whatsoever. It's probably just going to be a fast castle attempt over here from Zito, and it makes sense. He's got a lot of food workers. Winchester, he's very close to having enough to go out to the castle edge himself, though. Now we'll see fire galleys come out. Yeah, from all three docks. No for dog coming in for the red player yet. Yeah, those are some good tower locations for Sito. Basically preventing Winchester from going for a sneaky tower over here, which we also saw in the past. You gotta keep in mind that tower range over here is not that great. It's gonna be the same as the watchtower, right? So if you cannot place it immediately behind the villain over here, it's probably not going to be the best. Go. Yeah, and so far, Winchester is definitely looking the strongest over here. The most comfortable on this map. He's on his way to the castle each earlier than Sito, despite the fact that Sito went up to the field age significantly later. Winchester's got the most fire galleys coming out. Check out, look! Seven fire galleys killed up. Four already out. Meanwhile, Sito still already on three. He's going for five extra, but it's going to be so much more for Winchester once he's done. Producing the units. Gotta be careful over there, though. The fire galley is very low HP. He's bringing it back. 
to get serviced. As he goes for extra units himself, should be able to keep on putting pressure. Right hand side, we also have towers coming up for Vinchester. However, Sito will take the time to get some defensive towers up over here. And overall, well, the red player is looking great. He might be behind by about two workers. But he's putting a lot of pressure over here. He's going to have the most military units if he plays his cards right. That is not the way to go about it, though. My lord. As it actually does not that pushing Vinchester away. This is not great. Vinchester needs to go for War Galley if he ever hopes to get water control over here. But this is fantastic for Sito. He was in a position where it seemed as if he was going to get cleaned up. In the end, he was able to clutch it up over here for the most part. Now, not only is it looking competitive, but it's actually looking a little bit better compared to Vinchester, right? He's going for the War Galley upgrade himself while well, he's got one extra military unit. It's gonna be there a little bit later though, but still. We got it. Whoa! Imperial each other way for the told jam! You know, that is what staying in the Dark Age a little bit longer allowed him to go for, but this is very interesting. Overall, the gallery economy time is very, very close for both these players. Nice. Sito will not get pushed back over here by the one tower, but he's still in the right spot. He's got two dogs over here compared. So only one dock from Vinchester. He's got a defensive advantage. It's going to put him on five fire ships versus about six over here. Remember though that Sito is playing with Byzantines. So he should be in a better position over here compared to Vinchester for sure. He's got the numbers, he's got the stats. It's about time for Vinchester to make a play for demos, and he did go for the first demolition ship. Not exactly sure where it is. It's at the center. Yeah, not really engaging when he needed it the most. This could be good though for Vinchester. Let's take a look. He's paying attention, he's not paying attention whatsoever. That could have been a great demo shot, and now he's coming in, but that's extremely underwhelming. Compared to what he could have done if he had realized about it earlier. I'm gonna go as far as to say that he probably would have been able to win the engagement over there with a good demo shot. But now it's still looking great. He gets control up in the north. He's the one putting pressure down the south, so he's going to keep Winchester on the back foot. And then on the right hand side, he's got enough defensive units to defend himself against this pretty easily, as he's got the fast fire ship upgrade coming in with Byzantines that's going to be almost unstoppable. And the only thing that Zito is missing right now is some sort of defenses, or actually some sort of fortifications to go for a fort castle, you know, for, to, to try and secure either the center or one of the neutral islands, so probably a fort castle. Uh, some TCs over here, towers potentially could work as well. So there are plenty of ways for Sito to keep on advancing this game, but so far he doesn't seem to be interested in just doing anything other than just fighting over the, the water, right? Vinchester is the only player with a TC coming up at the center, although Sito's got a TC foundation over here. We'll see if he is able to get it up. Let's check. There you are. Left hand side. Sito is going to stay on the lead over here. Vinchester gets to the Imperial Age. He's already gone for Guard Tower. He doesn't have keep yet. He's got the first fire ship on the way, Ballistics too. 
But me, this is not going to work out. Not against Byzantines. Fast fires versus fast fires is going to always favor the Byzantine player. The only thing the Winchester's got going for him really is... Well, nothing really. The Japanese, they do not get heavy demolition ship if I'm not mistaken. Let me actually just corroborate that. Let's see. Yeah, they do not get heavy demolition ships, so. The only thing that could potentially bring the Japanese back over here would be to go for some fortifications. Just defend to them for dear life. Potentially the Galleon, of course. Galleon uh, can work against fast fire ships if you get enough numbers. But it's going to be difficult. Stone, not the one to make this any easier for Winchester. It's finally going for the fortification at the center. It's going to try and set the foot at the very center of the island. And on the, on the center island, rather. And because nobody's going for any fortifications around the uh, neutral goals, nobody's got access to these resources. Safely, anyway. As a matter of fact, Sito has already run out of gold. He's got enough stone to go for one more castle. And if he doesn't end up cleaning this up, it seems like he should be able to get a castle up around here. If I'm mistaken, I think the blue player should have enough space to get a castle potentially around here somewhere. I believe. Yeah, probably around here or so. Up in the north, towards the northeast, I don't think there's enough space over here. Left hand side? I think so. I think there might be enough space over here for a castle, potentially. There's certainly enough space on the back. I'm not really sure there's enough space over here. Towards the southwest. I think there might be enough over here as well. Yeah, I think there might be. Beautiful. Winchester is able to hold on against Ito over here. Nothing short of remarkable against the Byzantines once again. Is Ito? Hey! He got the castle! Ito's got the castle! He's getting access to go once again! And it's not over! Now Winchester and Ito both collecting from the neutral golds. Ito a little bit more heavily compared to Winchester though. Certainly going to put them. In a very nice position. He's bringing a few extra villagers over with the transport ship as well. He's got to be careful. Water! Dude! Welcome, welcome back. 12 months. Thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. That is a full year. So that is the Twitch anniversary for us. It's very much appreciated. And thank you so much for the extended support. How's life been treating you? Hopefully everything's gone. All right for you. Hopefully everything is going all right for you. And there we are. Seems like now Winchester is going to try to loosen this castle to make a play for the left hand side of neutral gold. He's got his own churches to work with over here. He's got keeps right now to work with as well. If you take a look at these, he's already gone for arrow slits and he's already gone for Yasama as well. So these are Yasama Towers. I don't think these are fully upgraded though. He needs chemistry still. Once he gets that, that's going to make the towers fully upgraded. Keeps fully upgraded. Another castle on the way for Sito. So far, the red player has been struggling to keep up over here, Sito. 
Ever since he got access to the extra gold over here. Managed to get the castle up over there. Put himself in a much better position. Meanwhile, Winchester. Winchester is probably going to end up losing this castle as well. If we take a look, it seems like he's trying to rid these sea towers. From the neutral wool line over here from Sato, but it might not matter too much. Here comes the bull player with a lot of fast fire ships. Taking the fires down from Vingester. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And even taking the trebuchet down. Yeah, you know, Sato is in a pretty good position already because of it. Still looking very, very good for the Frenchman here. A little bit better now for Vinchester for numbers. But up in the north, it's been Sito the one to put the most pressure. He's getting some cataphracts now out. In addition to all this. Let's do have the range upgrade on his fire ships. Greek fire, Sito. Uh, let's take a look at that. Oh, oops. There we go. Nope. No Greek fire for, for Mr. Sito. We'll probably not make too much of a difference, I would imagine, in this situation, though, where it's just one line of units facing each other. You can start targeting from a little bit farther away, but that's about it. He just runs out of stone. He can buy some stone to try and keep the castle up a little bit longer. But the economy is not looking strong enough, and he's going to give up on the castle instead. It's moving over to the left hand side where Sito is already trying to get a castle up over here to push Winchester away. The red player has got a very small amount of gold over here left to collect, I think. Actually, I think we have a few untapped tiles, right? It's not a small amount of gold. He's got 5700 gold left over there to collect in the end. So not too bad, of course. Sito is in a much better position though. He will now get in full control of the left hand side. He already has right, the right hand side, right? And what Winchester is trying to hold on over here. Keeping the trebuchets alive is not going to be able to do so. Well, Sito's got too many units to work with. Wait. What? Sito's getting pushed back over here. What What happened to the rest of the units? Where are Sito's extra fire ships? He's completely out of position over here. It seems as if he was looking better over there. The Avengers ends up pushing him away. And Sito, at the very least, he recognized situation a little bit earlier and was able to pull the units back to prevent getting completely pushed away from here but or from there rather but he does need to bring extra units man he does need to bring uh, some of the extra units otherwise this castle is going down at the very least he does have a good amount of villagers over here with the villagers he should be able to offset for one trebuchet worth of damage so, so long as he's got enough stone to keep on repairing the castle, he's going to be able to kill this one up for sure. So, it's not bad. Whatsoever. But yeah, of course, the trebuchet could be just the least of his, of his problems. After all, Winchester, he does have cannon galleon to work with. Could potentially bring this one over and try to target the castle with it as well.
There we go. Nice. Taking a look at the left hand side. Is the castle going down? Very soon. Sito is not trying to repair it anymore, so he's kind of given up on, on this area. Is Winchester going to be able to bring this game back? There is no way, right, Sito? We control the right and left hand side. Should be in a much better position, but he struggled to keep up. Where are the fire ships? He's playing Byzantines. He shouldn't really be struggling against Winchester's fire ships. He's got full Santa control. He's the only player with access to stone. He's got a lot of gold over here. He's got wood. Basically, it, it, it shouldn't really be too much of a struggle, but Sito's been... You know, getting pushed away from the left-hand side. Trish is going down very soon. The dock's probably going down, and well, he does have a few units coming out. It's still pretty rough. There we go. We finally see the units that don't need it to bring earlier come into play. Not in the right numbers though. He'll still get clapped by Winchester if he commits to the engagement over here. So he's going back trying to leverage the defender's advantage over here. The extra docks producing the units. So here comes Ito. Now he's getting a good amount of fires. Once again, he's trying. Take Winchester down and he succeeded for the most part. And it took a lot of extra units for him to be able to take the engagement over there. But now he finds himself in a much better spot. Plus, towards the southwest over here, he's going to end up taking a bunch of villages down from Winchester. Who does not seem to be paying attention whatsoever. So the villages over here will get targeted. You could see the keep go down. Now Winchester realizes about it. So he targets the, or he actually garrisons the keep. Gotta keep in mind, the Japanese do not get heated shot. So this one is... Already as upgraded as it can be. But yeah, that's about it. Up in the north. Fire ships coming in from Sito and... Vinches is trying to make a play for land control by going for like cavalry! Bloodlines, husbandry, everything get up from a single stable, and then the scouts are coming out over here. Well, this isn't this isn't really something that Sito should struggle against, right? He's got barracks coming up, so he can go for pikemen, of course. Hop of the year, potentially. He's got scale mill armor on the way. But then he's playing Byzantines. He's got the castles already. He can even just make a play for cataphracts, and there's nothing that Manchester will be able to do against that from stables, that is. Keep in mind, indeed. Yeah. Keeps in mind, even. Here we go. Yeah, the pipe over here are just going to be so good for Sito. He started to get such a lead that from this point on, it doesn't seem as if Winchester will be able to bring this game back anymore. So long as Sito plays this correctly and does not throw the game massively in some way. We have talked about this in the past and at this level, you are not really allowed, you know, to come back from a position like this because the players are so good at securing the games. It's so unlikely that we're gonna see any any major mistakes coming out for Sito from this position anyway. Oh boy, and that is a lot of fire! 
over there. My lord. He's got him in the relationship coming up. And now we have Greek fire. So that is why it looked like that. They, they are attacking from so far away. There's so much fire over here. It's ridiculous. Absolutely amazing. Here come the heavy demo ships. It's not even necessary at this point anymore. Here are the lap pushing Winchester away from the left hand side. And the south, the red player still has about 3,000 gold left to collect over there. But he told, still has got thousands of resources up over here on the right hand side. He's got a lot of resources up in the north. And then if he ends up securing this as well, that's going to put himself in. That's going to put Sito in a much, much better position. There we go, more heavy demolition ships coming out from Sito, huh? As a matter of fact, he's not even going for... ...that many fire ships anymore, even. Now he is. But yeah, since Winchester is kind of out of gold, he's got just a gold minus towards the south, right? But Sito is closing in on the remaining economy from Winchester. Gold players should be in a pretty good spot. Here come the demos, though! Big shots! Francie Toen is not going to be the end of it. Another big shot right there. My lord, Winchester. If he was already on the back foot, now he's on his pinky toe. Demos on the way. There's nothing there's nothing subtle about this unit. It's as in your face and it could possibly as it can possibly be. There we go. Sito is just dominating. We just cannot do anything from this position anymore. 13 military units. He does not have anything else queued up. He's going for some right now. His economy is simply not strong enough for him to queue up anywhere near as many units as he actually needs. To stay relevant this game. And as he still keeps on getting more and more ground by the minute. Killing that push him. Winchester away from the southwest. Towards the northwest. He is still putting pressure over here. But the Trevisha should be able to take the keeps down. So Winchester knows. You know, there's no way back over here, and the, uh, that's actually been the case for a while already. It's just the Vinches have kept on trying. Even though it seemed to be already favoring Sito, because he's been able to come back from similar situations in the past. It's just not something that you get to see every day at this level, of course. So with a 2-2 two two series over here, we have a 6-game set guaranteed. So let's go for game number five in a moment. Let's see who gets the lead and of course, game number six is gonna be match point no matter what. If we take a look at the achievements, we'll see the military favors Winchester by uh, quite a bit. He does end up getting a better than 65k ratio while for economy, 76k ratio, sorry. While for economy, we have a stronger economy for Sito by a lot and more so than enough to Offset for the better KV from Winchester. Villager max count and total amount of villagers lost over here will favor Sito as he ended up losing 20 villagers and he had the highest villager count towards the end of the game while Winchester on the other hand he ended up losing the most villagers himself. Actually. And he didn't have anywhere near as many villagers compared to Sito at any point in time. Well done. Go back then, we'll jump into game number five in a moment. And there we are, welcome everyone then to 
game number five. And interestingly enough, they are getting the TCs within range of each other. Now, you're not allowed to engage in a TC war. So, this might not be a restart. Just because they have the TCs right next to each other. Or this could just be a... You know, regular... Dark Age. With the difference that the players will have to consciously prevent themselves from targeting the other player's CC. For the Civilization, Cito's gonna be playing with Portuguese, Winchester's gonna be playing with Italians. Cito on the right hand side playing uh, where the Portuguese will get uh, with this Civilization, given that we are using the new patch they are going to have, first off 20% gold discount on all units, as well as 10% extra HP on Navy units, right, on ships. We'll see for the Portuguese also, for a new bonus for them as a matter of fact, that foragers collect 0.30, actually 0.25 units of wood per unit of food they collect, right? So I, I think you get 25% free wood for the amount of food that you collect from berries. That is a new bonus for them. The team bonus, which was shared vision for team games, has been removed. And instead, I think the faster research and upgrades has been set as the new team bonus, if I'm not mistaken. Then they also get access to Fate Tree in the Imperial Age. But uh, let me corroborate this once again. Portuguese. Yeah, technology is researching 25% faster has been set as a team bonus for uh, Portuguese. Of course, this is still going to affect the civilization when playing a 1v1, as they are technically team 1 for Cito, right? Let's go to be about it. Taking a look at the... Civilization from Winchester. We already talked about Italians, as a matter of fact, before, so... No need to introduce civilization once again. Instead. Oh! Hey ho! Uh, this is actually not supposed to happen. <laughs> At the very least, we do not have a Persian player over here, but I'm pretty sure this is not meant to, to happen in this game, so I think this would have been a restart. Let me take a look at the, the handbook really quickly. You know, we saw a game before in this tournament where one player was playing Persians and they did engage in a TC war and the Persian player came out on top, of course. And they had to replay the game fully afterwards. I'm not really sure if that's going to be the case over here or not. Uh, or if it was the case only because we had Persians. Because over here it should be even ground for both these players, right? Like, no TC is going to be... Stronger than the other one. Double cap three. Yeah, let me take a look at the, the rules. Oh man. <laughs> non Persian douche. Interesting. Special rule for Double Krakatoa. Similar to a Nomad Star maps, villager fighting and intentional TC wars within the first three minutes are not allowed. Okay, so because they started fighting against each other after... Yeah, the, the three minute mark passed. I think this is just going to be fine. And they, they're not going to have to replay this one. Okay. Yeah, and it seems like Sito's actually coming out on top over here. I mean, he did end up losing one villager, but he was able to take two from Winchester, so it's not too bad. Man, I just love to see the TCs on fire. 
There we go. Beautiful. Here come the villagers. Yeah, and Zito, well, he ends up taking the PC down. Now he's going to take the time. Try and take Binchester out of the center fully. And this can make a huge difference. There's a lot of fish over here for players to collect from. So being the only player with access to the center is going to put you in a much, much better position, of course. While Zito did struggle to collect resources while focusing mainly on taking the TC down from Winchester and potentially pushing the red player out of the center. Winchester instead is going to be able to go out to the field agent himself just fine. And that means that we could see some archers come out, for instance, uh, very soon from Winchester. And that's going to put Zito in... A little bit of an awkward position, but if the player is able to breach through the walls over here, and he would have been able to come in over there if he was paying attention a little bit. But yeah, if he is able to breach in, he might be able to get some of these villages down. I don't think all of them, because Vinchester can still just delete one of the palaces and try to make a play for the TC on the left hand side, move the villages over to here instead. And that would result in a lot of idle villager time, yes, but then that would also be the case for Zito if he chose to chase the villagers from Vinchester, for instance. In the end, it's really going to be a matter of how many resources Vinchester can get from these villagers compared to how many resources Zito is kind of deprived from. By still trying to destroy the walls from Mr. Vinch. In any case, what I would have liked to see from the blue player would have been some walls around the palaces over here. So that Vinchester would not have been able to leave the palaces and just move away. And then, yeah, he can commit to trying to take the mill down, for instance, right? And then once he gets to the village himself, he can go for a tower or for archers and then just take the village down, which would be pretty much guaranteed picks. However, with Winchester being the first player to get to the village and even having enough resources to go up to the castle edge already... He's got an archer range up. He needs to go for a blacksmith. And then he's going to be on his way to the castle age. And Zito is not even out of the dark age yet. Only well, now clicking out to the fuel age. Let's take a look. Here comes the archer. Of course, no fletching right now. The blacksmith. As a matter of fact, Winchester is only going for it. No, this is a house, right? Oh no, he's going for a uh, blacksmith. He needs to go for a house now. Yeah, he needs to get fletching. In the end, Sito gets pushed away from the center. And the fact that Winchester was able to take advantage of these resources the most. Given the current situation of the game is nothing short of remarkable. Here we are. Yeah, so H is gonna be here not much later for Winchester than Sito is going to get to the fuel age. The player will need though, however, to go for a market. To try and balance his economy because it's been pretty difficult. For Mr. Sito to to balance his economy over here now. He's got a tower on the way. And Manchester's going to have to finally uh, bail out of here and go towards the CC. And he will, most likely. Also, because Vinch is collecting some extra stone, he's probably going to be in a position to go for either a second, potentially even a third TC, once he gets the Castle H. Or, could try to collect a little bit more stone, maybe sell some of the food over here and try to go for a castle. Now, this is something that you're expecting Sito to go for, playing with Portuguese, as the organ guns are so strong. Not necessarily something you're expecting to see from Winchester, playing with the uh, Italians. At all, right? Like, Genoese Crossos, not really going to be doing too much for him. Salve. 
Since you workshop on the way for revenge. Oh, in the monastery. No extra TC. Won't be able to go for one for a while. Still keeps on collecting stone though. So we could see a castle drop at some point. Anyway. And this is actually very good. Because the TC was left on almost no HP for Sito. Only 800 over here. Actually, a single Magnolia would be enough. For Winchester to take this one down. So long as Sito does not try to come into repair anything. Give the amount of uh, resource that Sito's got right now. Would mainly. And it'd be pretty difficult for the Frenchman. To keep the TC up over there. So what does he do? He goes for a watchtower. Try and keep any siege away from the TC. And if we take a look at this point of view. He knows about the siege workshop of course. The center is revealed to both players at all times. And no man is coming out from Winchester. No sir. He's got a ram on the way instead. And he's just going to have to try and, and fight this one off. We see the conversion coming up. And the conversion is connecting. Yes. Mr. Winchester. Here we go. Beautiful. Good defense for Zito. Still significantly ahead in work account because of having the second TC. Being the only player with the second TC, right? Push coming up on the left hand side. It's too strong for Winchester to fight against as he doesn't have enough navy units. He's got the War Galley upgrade on the way, but Sito's getting to the Castle Edge himself as well, so he should be able to go for War Galley as well. And he's got more Fire Galleys than Winchester, so that should put him in a very good spot. And he does have the War Galley upgrade on the way now. And the castle's on the way for Sito. We were expecting this to be the case. Meanwhile, Winchester is bringing the villagers over to the tent to try and get a four castle himself. However, he's got to get pushed away by Sito's own castle. And this leaves Sito in such a good position. Winchester, when he realized about the castle... Being almost up already for Sito, he had, as he had no choice, to relocate the castle foundation elsewhere. But that, that was the location he wanted to get the castle at, because he would have been able to target the TC from there. Now, he's going for the castle towards the south over here. Which is going to target the tower. Not really sure if it's going to target the TC. It seems like it will target the TC. But Sito's going for yet another castle. A defensive one this time around towards the south of the center TC. And this should put him in a very good spot. Organs guns are coming out already. Sito's even taking the monks down from Mr. Winchester as well. So the bull player is looking fantastic. Overall population so much stronger compared to Winchester. Close to 60% higher even. Well the cast comes up from Winchester and it's going to target all the villagers. Trying to get the castle out from Sito. The hill advantage over here is going to make it a little bit harder for Winchester to effectively deny this one. Sito should get the castle up. However... It is coming in at a great cost with a single villager left over here. Get in the castle up single-handedly, that woman. Will provide Sito with the defenses that he needed. Well, Winchester managed to get a bunch of villagers down over there. As a matter of fact, he's the one with the most villager kills this game. 21 to 9, Eco KD. But it's not enough because Sito... But I haven't had the second TCF for such, such a longer time compared to Winchester, who is only now going for extra TCs. Yeah. He put himself in a much better position and Winchester recognizes it now. So he goes on to call the GG. Sito is going to be up in the series against all predictions against Winchester with a partial score of 3-2 and Winchester's only way back into the series over here is going to be two wins back to back. Well, Sito, Sito needs one win out of two remaining games. Let's take a look at the achievements before jumping into the six potentially final games. It's going to be match point, of course. And we'll see for Militari a yeah, better KD for Benchester. In the end, is about three to two. How are the economy so much better for Sito? 40% stronger economy, so that more than offsets for the few extra units that Winchester was able to kill Francito.
Zayati looking better for the blue player despite taking a lot of losses, trying to deny the castle from Vinchester in the end, uh, or trying to, sorry, get a defensive castle up against Vinchester's forward castle, but in the end, uh, the advantage that Sito had in working on over there was too large, proved too big for Vinchester to offset for, even by getting a bunch of villagers down when Sito was trying to get the castle up, so, well done! Sito 3, Winchester 2. I don't think a lot of people would have predicted this to be the case after game number 5. So we'll take a look at game number 6 to see what it is that we get. For the time being, let's go back. And here we are, guys! Could potentially be the last one. We saw Double Arabia for game number 1. Go in favor of Winchester now. It's going to have a chance to equalize the series and triple Arabia. Well, Sito's going to have a chance to equalize the series over here and force a full set. For civilizations, it's going to be Sito, the one to play with Hans this time around, and Winchester, the one to play with Hindustanis. And when uh, we saw in game number two that we have four quarters and I did not see Hindu Sands over there despite the fact of interest to have it open it's you know gotta be because he was saving it for triple Arabia potentially so we have talked about both these civilizations already in game number one if we are to take a look at the map generations instead which is going to take a little longer of course because of this being a triple TC start for both these players right We'll see that the bull players got the main goal towards the south, forward, to the east. So, uh, and, and his south base has got the main goal towards the east. Secondary goals are going to be actually close to the center. It's very hard to see it, but there is one over here underneath the scoreboard. And the other one, I'm actually not really sure exactly where it is. Meanwhile, Vinchester, on the other hand, you're going to see that the red players got the main goal on the back. And that is a little bit better. He's got the... Second goal over here towards the north, and the other second goal is going to be towards the east. So, at the very least, these are going to be kind of backish, especially these two. Well, if you take a look at Sito, on the other hand, this is this is going to be forward, this is going to be side ish, and he doesn't seem to have a, a back extra goal. As a matter of fact, where is the third goal for Mr. Sito? Is there a third goal for him for his south base? Oh, you know what? Hold on. I think this might be Sito's third goal. It's actually closer to Winchester's base. Because if you take a look, Winchester's got the main goal over here, and then he's got secondary goal over here and a secondary goal over here. Unless this is the secondary goal from his back base. That will certainly explain it, but wh where is the secondary goal from uh, Sito? Oh, it's all the way on the back over here. Okay, 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 we got it, we got it. So main, secondary, secondary, meanwhile, on the back... For Sito, he does have a secondary one on the back over here. He's got the four one, the, the the main one forward, and then this got he's got this one right. Yes, I think as a, the other secondary goal. And well, this is good to have on the back, but it's not looking the best. We take a look at Sito instead. Yeah, he's got the main one forward up uh, up in the north. His north base instead, I mean. He's got this one forward, then the secondary goal is going to be towards the south over here. I mean, it's so hard to really distinguish which resources belong to which bases. But the most important thing is that... Okay, yeah, there we go. This is the, the, the third goal for him, actually. And the most important thing is that he does have some back resources, but it doesn't seem to be too many, right? So this is one, two secondary goals... Make that three secondary goals that he's got on the back. And that's about it. All the main goals seem to be forward. Meanwhile, for Vinchester, on the other hand, we already established earlier that he's got the main goal from his south base on the back, which is fantastic. And then the main goal of his back base is forward. However, he does have a secondary goal over here on the back, which is not too shabby. So you're going to look up in the north then, Vinchester. Will not have any resource on the back, though. But I would say it's somewhat comparable. I would, I would say it's somewhat comparable for both these players, overall. So, I don't think the map generation is going to be the cause for anybody over here potentially coming up on top, or or not so much. 
Even the elevations seem to be pretty fair, you know? We have elevations over here in front of Sito's North TC. Uh, kind of in front of his back base as well, right? And then Vinches is going to have some elevations around his South TC and in front of his back TC. It seems like the, the elevations kind of reach Vinches there a little bit more so compared to Sito, but... Yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult for Zito to take advantage of it because the hills are significantly closer to Winchester's base in any case. So it will require Winchester not really paying attention too much or not reacting on time to a potential push from the Frenchman for him to eventually lose access to those hills. We'll see. Village is on the way and Zito is going to be the first one to go there. I thought that I saw the fuel HQ that for both players. At about the same time, I think Winchester might have... Give it uh, after a villager, perhaps. Yeah, there we go. 45 seconds for Mr. Sito. Still taking the boards. <laughs> that is how hectic these triple DC uh, start games are. You're going out to the fuel age, 40 seconds away from it, and you're only now collecting one of the boards. Fuel age is here, so does not pay attention though. He's losing one scout over there. Oh, and the other one is surviving just barely, but Vinchester is coming over. Scout's getting pushed away from Sito. That'll be about it. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, nice back to save it right away. Good unit control over there. The game's about to get significantly messier though, of course. One village goes down. Still, it's going to be the second villager actually going down. And interestingly enough, both these players have been taking losses. Winchester lost two units so far. One of those was a scout, the other one was a villager, it seems. While Sito ended up losing two units himself, and both those were scouts. It's got only one scout remaining. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still on the way now for Vinch as well. Beautiful. And there we go, Castle H is here. Fantastic. For Mr. Sito. What do we have for the blue player to work with? He's got two stables down the south. He's got a monastery coming up as well. Up in the north, he's got just the barracks coming in to try and defend himself against a potential push. As Vinches is already bringing in the scouts over, he's going to end up taking the village down. Not quite! He actually ends up getting cleaned up! There is another villager though that's very weak, Francito. He manages to save the village at the last second, and in the end, he's going to still remain at the same. Uh, KD. And by the way, that was my bad. Uh, I was reading earlier, this is if it was the, the standard KD, it was Eco KD. So Sito ended up losing two villagers, only one of which Winchester killed. Meanwhile, Winchester lost two villagers, only one of which, uh, sorry, none of which Sito killed. So both these players lost a few extra units to Gaia, which once again goes to show how hectic Triple TC starts really are. 
One gold miner only for Winchester, though. What is going on over here? We saw that he had some back resources, right? He's got the gold in the back over here. He's just not taking advantage of it. He's traveling to produce the units significantly as well. He's got four camels on the way, and then he's got 19 gold left. Meanwhile, Zito. Zito is looking very strong, guys, with a higher villager count. He's at the 4th EC. We have the 4th EC also for Winchester, and he's going for the 5th one. But yeah, Zito's got not only the higher villager count, he's got the highest military count as well, and he's coming over here. He's got to be careful, of course. Winchester's camels will obliterate the Knights from Zito, so he needs to make a play for Pikeman, and he was doing it. And that is also the reason why we saw the Monastery over here as well, but it's so difficult to keep track of everything. If you're in the player's position... There is so much to pay attention to over here that I'm not positive you're really going to be able to micro your monks successfully, you know? Beautiful castle from Cito. It's just putting so much pressure against Winchester. Meanwhile, Winchester is going for a counter raid with the camels. He's able to get one village down already. Still, still staying ahead. Work account for the time being, but seems like Winchester is not done with this. Not by a long shot. There's another village going down. And another one. And he's going to go after a few extra. I think he's taking all the villages in the goal over here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's going to be six villages down so far. The seventh walks away. And still, the blue player stays ahead in work account. So he was able to get uh, the castle up over here and put pressure. Winchester is struggling to keep his economy working. Let's take a look at gather economy time so far. Yeah, and it's looking better for Zito for sure. About 40 minutes. Or 34 minutes, actually. Higher gather economy time uh, at this point compared to compared to Mr. Winchester. So it's looking, once again, very good for Zito. The one thing that Winchester's got going for him that's so strong for his civilization is a discount with villagers. He's already... Saving... About 15 food. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Per villager, wait a moment, no, that is a uh, 20%, right? No, so it's 10. He's saving 10 food per villager in the castle age. And that's allowed him to, to keep on going over here a little bit more. But still, Sito is still going to be the one in the driver's seat. And only he's got right now a castle coming up forward. But Sito is going to be the first player to click out to the Imperial Age. And Winchester is not getting there just yet. This does come at the cost, of course, as Sito's... Military count is nowhere near as good as Winchester's. Beautiful. Here you are. Yeah, and so far... So good. Been just there. He's got a lot of camels around the castle over here. Remember that he stands to get two bonus damage from camel. By the units against Billy. He's bringing the armor elephant as well. Meanwhile, Zito... Well, Zito's going for Patar. He's gonna try and take the castle down. Winchester is going to be pretty difficult, of course. He's actually losing HP faster than his chunking HP off his enemy's castle. And there's a defensive one coming up over here for Winchester. Not so much a defensive one, actually, is on top of the hill, and he's going to end up taking a bunch of villages down from Sito, who doesn't seem to be paying attention. Come on, man! One, two, three, four, five villages dead so far.
And this castle is going down. Francito, is it? It's not! He's brought a bunch of pikemen over. The villagers were already garrisoned. You know, I think he... he he struggles to keep the castle up though because Vincenzo can just go for a few petards and just finish this one off anyway. But still, not the one to give up. This position around the south is going for yet another castle over here. He managed to get to the Imperial Age. Winchester is going to be on his way very soon. But still managed to get to the Imperial Age while still staying very competitive. He was behind the military count. He was ahead in villager count. By the time he got up, he fell, he fell behind. He fell behind in the villager count, but got ahead in military count. go village will be here very soon for Vinchester the most part has been able to hold on against Ito which is nothing short of remarkable given how much pressure the bull player was putting now that he's got half of the year trebuchets Going to make it so much harder for Vinchester. Vinchester can still play for Gulen, but of course, so long as we have a meat shield of Halberdier to defend the trebuchets with. Well, Gulen production is not going to be possible for Vinchester eventually if he ends up dropping the castle. So very important for him to try and take advantage of the units. So long as he's got access to them, he's going to do so. The Gulen already up in the north. The center on the very back of Sito's base. Meanwhile, Sito's got some units coming over the Halberdier though against villagers. And uh, my lord, actually, Sito is getting some villages down over here with the Halvadir. You'd, you'd be expecting the Gulen to be significantly more effective at this, and they are. But Sito has been able to make use of the Halvadir as if they were raiding units. And all of this while being able to take the castle down, down the south. Taking the TC down, down the south. Vinches has got just the one castle over here, and then... For the most part, he's got 41 villagers that can only garrison inside one castle. And this could be really good for Sito if he can get the raids going over there. But so far, it's been very difficult for him to keep up. Vinchester, with a very small amount of units, being able to get so much more damage done. Take a look at the golem over here on the back. All those villagers are going down for sure, as long as still doesn't realize about the raid and tries to take the golem down with the villagers. So it's going to be a few extra kills from Vinchester. Sito is going down to 109 villagers while Winchester is staying at a very healthy 140 plus. Are the holes with being really good? Yes. An upgrade that I think definitely should be seen a little bit more. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about, right? If Sito is able to bring a few units over here, he should be able to get tons of damage done. After all, there's only one castle and once again about 41 villagers, man. 40 right now. Completely exposed. Just trying to defend himself up in the north, so can really pay attention everywhere at once, but Yeah, it seems like it seems like the game's starting to slip away. Those losing the lead that he had. Winchester now is going to be the player looking stronger for both military and for economy. And a lot of that is just attributed to the fact that Winchester's raids over here were so much more effective. With a very small amount of units, he got so much more damage down compared to Sito. There we are. Yeah, Incito doesn't want to keep on going anymore over here. What an incredible performance from Vinchester. 
he looked to be on the back foot and Sito struggled to seal the deal. To be fair, the unit composition was always going to be tricky for Sito as well. We already talked about him and Sanderson's uh, and Hans before, right? Uh, the interesting thing is that at that point in time, when we talked about him stands versus Hans before, we were talking about how difficult it was for Hans to get a good army going against Hindustanis because of the possibility of Ghulam against Cavalry Archers and the possibility of Camels against Knights and Tarkins. Vinchester, playing with Hans, was able to win the game in game number one on Double Arabia. And now, you know that the tables have turned and Vinchester is going to be the one playing with Hindustanis. He is able to beat the Huns on Arabia as well. Triple Arabia this time around as well. But this just goes to show it's so much about the players. So much more so than about the civilizations. Of course the civilizations matter. But it's ultimately the players who are going to be making use of the civilizations. Not the other way around. So let's go and take a look at the achievements one final time guys. Before jumping into game number 7. To see who moves on. To Double Cup 3's Grand Final. Between both these players to face Mr. Tatito. Militari, we're going to see a better KD for Winchester. Better than 74 even. And Whitebeard, thank you so much for the resub. Prime Gaming as well. Six months, very much appreciated. Welcome, welcome back. Hope you're doing alright. And uh, if we take a look at the economy, we're going to see a stronger economy for Winchester as well. So he managed to get a better KD. He had a stronger economy to produce more units with. He had a higher villager max count over here and took the fewest losses too. Losing about 25 villages while still ended up losing 104 villages. And this just goes to show, right? It's, it's all about the way you utilize the civilization. Winchester did so much more damage over here. With Ghulam alone, he was completely uncontested. Sito never went for cavalry. And yeah, and it was so much more effective compared to Sito's push with Halbadir, even as Sito was looking stronger earlier in the game. Winchester is able to bring this game back, and it's going to be the end of game number six. And here we go, guys! A full series for the lower brackets. Final set. Going the distance. Game number seven is here upon us. As we have Rivlet, one of my favorite maps of all time. We're going to see Sito playing with Berbers. And we're going to see Vinchester playing with Lithuanians. Notice there are no Gujaras. There are no Huns. Huns already were used by both these players. And instead, we're going to have Berbers and Lithuanians. What does it mean? Taking a look at Sito Civilization first. It's going to get 10% faster moving villagers and ships. As well as 15 and 20% cheaper oh, stable units in the castle and Imperial Ages. He gets for the team bonus. Also, access to Janitor. Meanwhile, Winchester, on the other hand, playing with uh, Lithuanians, will get one extra attack on knights and light units per each relic garrison up to four relics. As well as 10% faster moving Skirm and Spearlin units. 150 extra starting food, which can be quite handy on a map like this, right? It allows you to prevent taking quite as much idle TC tank compared to Sito, for instance. For Winchester, we'll also see for the team bonus that they get 20% faster working monasteries, which makes collecting the relics a little bit smoother and because of the way that the map generates over here, the relics are going to be always along the center. Interestingly enough though, they do seem to be favoring Winchester a little bit. So what else could you possibly ask for when playing Lithuanians than to have the relics be just that much closer to your base compared to your opponent, right? So we have one over here. We have one over here. We have one over here. As well as this one. And while this one is going to be a little bit more contested or more neutral, this one is definitely favoring Vinchester. And this one is 100% uh, favoring Vinchester for sure. So if he can collect 4 out of 5 of those relics, he's already going to maximize the bonus for his civilization. If he can collect 3 of those relics, he's already going to surpass the attack that 
he would have been able to get if his civilization got access to Blast Furnace if he collects two out of fire relics, which for Lithuanians is not the best. He'll still at the very least compensate for the fact that he does not get access to Blast Furnace. Regardless though, Sito's king being the curious creature it is, is going to just sit standing over here. Sit standing, yeah that seems like very good English. He's just going to sit here staring at Winchester's kingdom over here and all he can see is a house. But he's captivated by it. No, oh, and Vinchester's got no idea. This is like uh, Michael Myers, right? <laughs> he's going to see you, and you're not going to see him, but he's watching you. Is he sitting though? I don't know. Hard to tell with the zoom. I'm going to assume he is, because I'm never wrong. Feel it's on the way now for Vinchester. He's going to be the first player with access to fire galleys. Getting water control is going to give you extra resources, so that's great. And Hots! Coming in hot with the Prime Game and stuff. Thank you so much for the support. First time, from what I can see, and uh, it's very much appreciated. I'm happy you're enjoying the content as much as to spend your Prime sub on my channel. And you guys know, give me all the Bezos box. I want them all. We need to get back at Amazon. And it's very much appreciated, of course. Free for you. I still get my share of the revenue, so it's fantastic. The commands when one or when all kings are sniped. When all kings are sniped. You need to kill all three. Well, he does a little bit reckless about his own kings. <laughs> just roaming around the uh, board over here. Just kind of banking on the movement speed of the units not to get sniped because these are very tanky actually 75 hp so even if you get the tc garrison over there or like unless, unless you're able to garrison the tc exactly at the same time the king starts approaching it you're very unlikely to just take it down like that so still is feeling all right and you know after all because you need to lose all three kings anyway if you lose two in dark age or in the imperial age it like, it doesn't make a difference, right? You're still gonna have one king to protect. And so long as you have one king alive, you're still going to be in the game. It's probably even going to be a little bit easier to keep track of. But anyway. Beautiful position from Benchester. Got to the village faster. Tito is gonna try to fast castle over here instead. And now Benchester will be the one getting full water control. There's a lot of extra idle TC time for him though. So the five extra fishing ships he's got right now. Actually, barely compensate for the minute and a half of extra that he's done. He's gotten so far. So by the time Sito gets to the fuel age, the work account is going to be about the same for both these players. You can see 65 dead even. And then it seems like Sito is actually not really going to be able to fast castle quite as quickly as I thought he was going to in Winchester. Winchester is looking good. There we go. Beautiful so far. The game's been fairly uneventful besides Winchester just getting water control. Now he's getting to the castle age. Tito's going to the castle age. The difference is going to be of 18 seconds favoring Vinchester. Not too much. Oh! -ho! A little pen for the king over there. It's still open though. It's open! And he's walking away! Oh my lord! Tito tried to make this one work in the end. He couldn't do it. Here we are. And it seems like he's just going to garrison these, right? He already has one inside. TC. There we go. Two inside the TC. Meanwhile, uh, Sito, well, he's got one down south. 
I don't know if he forgot about it. But it's right there. And then the rest... Well, he's got one up in the north. One on the very back. And it seems like he's just going to keep it over there in the corner. Okay. That's getting sound cheap. And uh, as we stated, only 18 seconds of a difference to the castleage. So Vinci just got in there and Sito is not too far off. Now what do we expect over here? Sito gets access to knights, uh, camels for 15% cheaper already in the castleage. And let's take a look at how many stables actually managed to get up. So he's in the castleage. He's got two stables at the center. And that's going to be about it. That is not the strongest production that I have seen whatsoever. Especially on a triple TC start, you are expected to be able to produce from, th from three at the... Very least, especially if you are playing Berbers. Manchester, on the other hand, down south, has got no production building, so the center's got two stables, but he is going for a 4 TC. And then up in the north, he is going for a 50 TC, so he's gonna try to go for double stable net production. And uh, quintuple TC villager production. Oh, nice villager pick over here, Francito. After taking the fishing ships from uh, Winchester, sorry, after taking the fishing ships down, he's able to get a villager for the fifth eco kill. He's going to get another one. He does. And another one! Simply not something that I would be expecting to see over here whatsoever. And he's got another knight down the south, and Sito doesn't seem to be able to pay attention everywhere. So that's another village going down, down the south. That's not going to be the end of it as well. A second villager crumbles. As the knife stays here alive. Has so much potential for damage. Now Sito finally realizes about it. We'll take the knight down or at the very least push it away. But Winchester could save the knight for a little bit longer. And then try to turn around and go back to strike one more time after Sito. And garrisons the TC. Or the kings. We have one on the right hand side. He doesn't have it over there anymore. Does he have two garrison over here? Uh, not really. Where is where's the king? King's over here. Oh, the other king is over here. Down the south still. Alright. Iron Cousin on the way. Vingister. It's going to take this king inside the TC as well. And they gotta be careful, man. Uh, because the TC is going to provide protection so long as they don't accidentally out garrison it so if you send your villagers in like for instance over here Sito's going to start striking and Winchester is going to bring the villagers into the TC check this out what he realizes about it yeah there we go so he brings uh, the village inside the TC over here On the left hand side he doesn't have to garrison this one but then if he out garrisons the TC over here and is not careful yeah there we go he did he did a really good job we have seen oftentimes players out garrison the kings at the same time as they out garrison the villagers, but this time around Winchester do realize about it and prevented that from happening. So he's getting a defensive castle up and Sito. Sito's gonna keep on putting pressure. He's going after the monk. He cannot get one king, but he's going to get the monk. Yeah, and, and Sito doesn't seem to. To care about the kings too much, they're completely exposed. But to be fair, Vinchester is playing full economy over here, so... It's unlikely he's gonna send any units forward to get the raids going, right? Meanwhile, it's going to be Sito instead. Who is producing from seven stables now! And this is what I was talking about! This is what I wanted to see! As soon as we got to the castle age, Sito was only on two stables, which seemed too little to me, but now... He's producing from sales table, and that's so many knights. And the thing is, Vinchester, he managed to get two relics right now. He's got forging, that's going to be plus three attack. That's only one extra attack compared to what Sito gets access to in the in the castle age himself, naturally. So it's not strong enough for Vinchester over here whatsoever. Given the military lead that we have for Sito, all the, the Vinchester can go for is light chat and knights. And because Sito's got four times the military count compared to Winchester, it doesn't seem like the red player is going to be able to defend over here whatsoever. And we might see a TC go down, guys. We might see a TC go down. And fortunately for Winchester, none of the kings are here. But unfortunately for Winchester, it's not going to matter. Because even if you do not lose a TC that has a king in it, even if you do not lose a king, 
you can still lose the game just by falling behind, right? So, like, he's still going to be in a rough position. This is not save the king for, for this much time. This is just another lose condition, but you can still lose normally. And it seems like Winchester is going to start crumbling very soon. He's bringing some of the light chai over, the knights. Doesn't seem like it's going to be anywhere near enough as Winchester's second DC at the center is crumbling in a moment. Yeah, and the king Francito is not afraid of anything down the south. Yeah, there we go. A bunch of villagers crumbling right now from Winchester. The blood parade. My lord. Villager after villager. Crumble to the knights over here on their way to the TC. And Indian's just going to be the one woman to make it. And it's not going to be for that long either. As those going after the next TC. And Winchester calls a GG. As the dog clutches it up. And against all odds. Will be the one to move on to Double Cup 3's Grand Final. To face Tato for an epic rematch. In the best of 9 series, where Tato's already going to begin with a point, but Sito taking Winchester out. Nothing but surprises everyone. And will certainly earn his spot in the tournament's grand final. And my man, I, I really thought that Winchester was going to have this one, but I'm glad that I was actually uh, wrong, you know? Sito will have a second chance, we'll have a, another crack at. Taking on Tato, we'll see if he's going to be able to do it. Uh, we're going to have to wait for them to schedule the series for sure. But for the time being, it seems like this is going to be about it. Taking a look at the achievements, we'll see for Militari a very nice KD for Sito. And not only a very nice KD for Sito, but even a stronger economy. Despite the fact that Vincester was the player to prioritize villager production the most this game. For society, as we see Vincester did get... A 23 higher villager max count compared to Sito. He, however, lost the most units this game in terms of economy. He ended up losing 69 villages over here, half hitting. And Sito, on the other hand, ended up losing 7 villagers, 4 fishing ships, so 11 military units, and that's going to be about it. Oh, uh, yeah. So, well, John, Sito 4, Vincenzo Neil. A Frenchman moves on to the Grand Finals. Winchester gets knocked out of Double Cup 3.